Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Smith from Backbench Coder. Back after a long break. Oh, a lot of things happened in the last three months. Anyway, in this video, we're gonna create this beautiful napper animation using Framework Motion and React. The navigation bar in the website is a key element, especially when you are trying to keep things minimal. So while designing a website, make sure the navigation menu is attractive. Look at this beauty. We have the SVG animation, stagger effect, and the clip path animations. We'll go through the whole process step by step. But before that, if you are new to the Framework Motion, I have a playlist on Framework Motion. Please check those out. You can also go through the Framework Motion docs. In fact, this animation is also there in the examples, but that is written with the old version of Framework Motion. Okay, enough talk. Let's start the show. Cool. So first of all, let's grab the boilerplate. Let's go to its repository, switch to the branch, copy the URL, and now just go to a terminal and run npx create next app with a hyphen e, pass the URL and the app name. I also put the link in the description box. Just copy the URL and paste it here. <laughs> Meanwhile, please hit the like button. Please also hit the subscribe button if you have any sympathy. <laughs> Done. Let's go inside the project and see what's going on. Where's <laughs> the package.json file? Go to the package.json and run the development server. First of all, so yarn dev. That will run my development server and let's see what's going on. And here I can see my boilerplate. Cool, let's see the technologies. As you can see, we are using Next.js and also I am using Tailwind CSS and TypeScript because I love TypeScript. Okay, cool. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's go to source and here look at this index.tss file. I have this delete component. Let's delete this component. How cool is this? Delete, move to trash, delete. And now just render the hello. Yeah, we are ready. And now I'm gonna copy and paste some CSS cause this is not a CSS tutorial. Come on. So here inside the styles, let's go to global.css and remove everything and put it here. You'll get the source code in the description box, don't worry. Okay, uh, let me just go through this. Look at this, I have this body and here I have this background color gradient. So now if I just go to a browser, I can see the gradient background. Yeah, hello. Instead of just going to a coding part directly, let's talk about the approach. Okay, so you have three layers on absolute position in this menu. Nav, the parent container, then a div on that, which is our background. If you see closely, we need to animate this background div. Then at the very top, we have this toggle button and the menu items. Cool, let's create the components. Okay, so first of all, let's create the navigation.tsx and the menu item. Okay, fine. Just go to menu item.tsx, rfc, that will give me the boilerplate. Fine. Remove the div and put the list. Inside the list, I have these two spans. One is the icon placeholder and one is a text placeholder. Look at the simple CSS. Icon placeholder with a fixed width and height and rounded full. Fine. Now just go to navigation.tsx and here I have this rfc again. Remove the div and put a ul, another list. Okay, here I just need to render this menu items. So just create a simple dummy array of five elements and just render the menu items. Oh, my GitHub Copilot writes 70% of my code, by the way. Lovely. Now it's time to render this navigation. Go to index.tss, remove the hello, and this is nav. Inside the nav, I'm gonna add the navigation. Should be auto imported? Yep. So now, if I just go to the localhost 3000, look at this, beautiful. Now let's add the background. So as I told you, it will be a div with a class name background. Background, and that background has the color white. Yeah, look at this. Now let's add the toggler. So let's go to components. You see menu toggler.tsx, RFC again, and here I'm gonna put the SVGs. So inside the button, SVG, and put all these three parts. Fine, just go to index.tss and render this menu toggler. So menu toggler should be auto imported. And now I should have this menu toggler. Nice. Also look at the CSS. All these elements has the absolute position. So it will go on top of on top of on top. What was that? My UI is almost ready. Now before going into the animation part, let's refactor the menu toggler.tsx. Okay, look at this. Inside the path, I have a lot of common properties like fill, stroke width, stroke, stroke line cap. So why not create a separate component? 
let's get a component path with a capital P and here you just grab the props and then this will not be a div instead this will be path cool yeah here I'm gonna pass all these common properties nice and then also gonna spread all the rest of the properties fine we we'll replace this path with the capital path what is capital path I remove all the unnecessary properties okay fine let's go to the animation part okay so let me just talk about how framework motion works to animate an element you need to convert that element to a motion element and how can you convert that using this motion to motion.d motion.ul motion.li cool really simple so scroll down and let's see how the variance works so that is one of the key part of framework motion yeah here it is cool so you need to define the states like visible hidden initial animate whatever the name doesn't matter and then you can just pass the variance to the variance props also notice that you need to pass the initial and the animate property and that is as a string value uh-huh we are gonna see the practical part don't worry mm -hmm. look at the propagation part guys this basically means that if you pass all the motion props to the parent element you don't need to pass this to the child element okay let's see just go to the code editor and run yarn add Primer motion that will install the Primer motion library. Fine, so let's animate the background. Go to index.tsx, got it, just grab the div, put motion, and also you need to define the variance. So variance here, I'm gonna create a new variant which is side variance. This is nothing but an object. Side variance at the top, let's define this. Sidebar variance. Uh -huh. I'm also going to use type script to so just grab the type. Okay, so we are going to define two states. One is open and one is close. At open, I'm going to add the opacity 0. And on closed, I'm going to add the opacity 1. I'm also going to add some transition. Duration 3 seconds. Really bad, but okay, let's, let's see what happens. So sidebar variance, I need to pass the state. So initial, that is open. And animate, that is closed. Fine. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. Very bad animation, but yeah, it works. Okay, you don't need the initial animation here, so just add false. And then this animation, we're gonna control the state conditionally. How? Let me show you. So look at this, I have this open and close. I have this toggler button. And that will basically control all the state. So let's do that. Okay, now we can actually use a boolean use state value, but there is a better approach. In framework motion, there is a hook called use cycle. It just cycles through a series of visual properties and can be used to toggle between the cycle through animation. So let's use that. So remove this part, use cycle, and this is false and true. Use open will be false at first, and toggle open will basically toggle this use open. Cool, let's toggle this. Let's pass this toggle open function as a toggle property to the menu toggler. A lot of toggle. Fine, just go to menu toggler.tsx and here just grab the toggler function. Yep. And on click on this button, I'm gonna execute this toggle. Let's see. Let me just log out this value is open and let's see. Yeah. Toggle is open true, is open false, is open true, is open false. I'm toggling. So toggling is working. Now I need to add the state conditional to this animate property. So animate if is open is true, I'll add this open state, else I'll grab this close state. Fine, save this and let's see. Look at this, it's toggling. Fine, let's see the correct animation. Look at the background, it's clipping. So there's a separate property in CSS which is called clip path. Let's see. Clip path, just go to browser and search for clippy. This is a nice tool. Let me show you how the clip path works. Okay, so look at this. Clip path, circle. Clip path, we want a circle safe. The first property is a radius. And then at 50%, 50% means the positions x and y value so let me just grab this yeah so i'm gonna do something like this 
in our animation. All right, let's do it. Uh huh. Just go to this open part, not open part, open state. Okay. Let's add the clip path circle. The radius is 1000 pixel, which will cover the whole nav, and then it will be rendered at 40 pixel, 40 pixel, which is the x and y value. Let's also add some transition. Duration is 0.4, that is fine. And then on the close state, let's remove the opacity. Here, this will be the same clip path animation, but this time, this will not be 1000 pixel. Instead, this will be 30 pixel. Okay, save this and let's see. Look at this. Oh, let's change the duration. Change this to 0 0.4. And now, oh. Look at this, beautiful. And now it's time to animate these menu items. So this will be only shown when the toggle is open. Look at this, this is called stagger effect, one by one, one by one. Okay, so first of all, just go to navigation.tsx. But before that, I want to show you how the propagation works. Okay, so as I told you, you can pass all the common properties to that parent element. So we are gonna do that. One by the nav to motion nav and then pass all the count properties so initial and animate put it here fine lovely let's see 3000 it should be working fine yeah cool and now let's animate this navigation let's go to a menu item.tsx one but this leads to motion element so motion.li again let's see how this animation works yeah so this will fade in up, right? Let's do it. Let's define a variance and define the open and close state. So open at y this is zero and the opposite is one. Let's also add some transition. Duration is zero point four and a is function. On the close state this will be y fifty opposite is zero because I want the fade in up effect. The transition is same. Okay, save this, import the variance from Primer Motion, and now just pass the variance. So on, th on this list, the variance is Motion Menu Item Variance. We don't need to pass all the other properties, because the propagation will take care of that. Okay, let's see what's going on. Look at this. The fading up effect is working, but there's something lagging, and that is the stagger effect. But it is. I don't want all the menu items to animate at the same time. I want this one by one and that can be controlled using stagger effect in Framer Motion. A search for stagger, stagger children, look at this. When using variance, animation of child components can be staggered by this duration. For instance, if the stagger children is 0.01, .01, the first child will be delayed by 0 seconds, the second element will be delayed by 0 0.01 seconds, the third element by 0 0.02 and so on. Okay, let's see how it works. So, mm -hmm. stagger children 0 0.5 and we need to define this to the parent element. Look at this. Let's do it, just go to navigation.tss which is the parent and define a variance. So navigation variance, again define these two states, open and close. On open, I'm just gonna add the transition cause we need to add the stagger children. The stagger children and also add the delay children 0.2 that will delay the first child by 0.2 seconds. Okay. Also, the close state again stagger children 0.05 seconds and the stagger direction is minus one. And that means while closing, the last child will be staggered first. As simple as that. Okay, save this. Just add the navigation variance to the UL. Motion.ul Variance, Navigation Variance No need to pass the other properties Save this and now look at this Refresh Wow, far better But there is some problem So while closing, I need to add some delay Just do that, just go to index.tsx And here while the background is clipping at the close state, just add some delay. So delay 0 0.4 seconds, that is fine. And now let's see. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh wow, I mean, this is orgasm. 
And now it's time to animate this toggle button. Look at this. This can be done using the SBG path animation. Let's see. Just go to menu toggle.tsx and here, first of all, let me just show you the close icon. Okay, let me just comment this out. Add the path for the close icon and let's see. Okay, cool. Now the idea is we are going to pass additional two properties, which is open path and close path. Okay. And then we'll just animate these two properties. Okay, the first one, second one, and third one. Let me just replace this. Okay, fine. Save this. Just go to path component. Grab the open path and close path. And the rest of the properties. Just replace the props with the rest. Beautiful. Now, first of all, just convert the path to motion path. So motion that path. Nice. And now let's define the variance. We can add some inline variance. So variance. Okay, so on open state, the D will be the open path, which is coming from the properties. I'm also gonna add some transition, so duration 0 0.3 seconds. And same for the close. So close. This will not be the open path, instead, this will be close path. Ah, uh, let me just make this closed. Close, not close, 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 closed. All the closed, fine. So again back to our top. This is close path, transition 0 0.3 seconds, fine. Let's see. Oh, refresh the page. Yeah. Look at this. Beautiful. So that's it guys. That's it from my end. If you have any doubt, if you have any question, just comment down below. I'd love to help you. I'll also put the source code in the description box. Please check this out. And if you're new to this channel, I make videos on web development and web designing. So if it somehow sounds interesting, somehow please hit the like button. Okay. Bye.